The overwhelming majority of YouTube tutorials are based on the extreme end game of Minecraft. Automation and minecart stations have their place, but when just one in six players have defeated the Ender Dragon in survival, it's clear where the advice really should be, and today I'm taking you on a normal run of Minecraft, except along the way we'll explain 101 different things to give you the courage you need to beat Minecraft and get yourself some wings. And by the way, this video took a long time to put together, so if you could subscribe with notifications turned on, I would really appreciate it. Not as much as I'd appreciate the first tip though. Oh. <laughs> so we actually spawned underwater on this seed, but that doesn't change the first tip that you're going to need to do regardless of your world. And no, it does not involve chopping down trees, but that's a fair backup. Uh, but the first thing you should do when you load up a world is immediately look around for structures. The interesting thing about right now in Minecraft is that structures are the best way to start a world, with villagers being absolute S tier. You get food, you get trades, and you get wood. Uh, however, if you can't find a village, and if we're being honest with ourselves, there's no sign of a village anywhere near here, then finding a desert temple or a jungle temple can be almost as good, but there's none of those around here either. And then after that, I'd say maybe a shipwreck or an ocean ruin if it's immediately visible, but we can't find any of those. Wait, 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 no, we can find. <laughs> wait, is that true over there? So first tip is make sure you find structures if they're nearby, they'll save you a little bit of effort. The second tip is if you want to confirm if something in the distance looks right and you don't have Optifine or a zoom function or a spyglass, go to your settings, go to video, and turning down your FOV to minimum kind of acts like a budget spyglass glass, as you can see, way over there, that is a shipwreck. I don't know how we found the Titanic so early on, I guess we're gonna head over there, and that'll be our start to our world. Not only does it contain wood, but it also can contain iron, diamonds, and all sorts of other things that you shouldn't really have this early on, but you can have early on on most seeds if you know where to look. So yeah, most shipwrecks spawn below the water, but it is intended game design for them to be able to spawn above it too, and in this case, it spawned in an iceberg which is surprisingly common. I mean, Minecraft just believes that ship plus iceberg is meant to be. And either case, this is a great structure to get because it is a source of wood, although it's wood planks as opposed to actual wood blocks. But also, there's always going to be some form of chest in there to reward you for the journey over. So we'll just place our staircase block over here and jump over in to show you where it is in this boat. As you can see, we ha now have access to carrots we have suspicious stew, we have coal, and we have potatoes, which covers us on the food front in a slightly better way than you might expect. I think these leather pants are probably not going to do too much for us, but it's a nice idea regardless. Also, the mast of the ship is always made from logs, which means that you should chop this down, because you know what we can do with this? We can craft it into anything we want, including a wooden pickaxe. This is the first thing you should ever craft in your Minecraft world. Tip free, if you're, if you're making a crafting table, you need the wooden pickaxe. It's gonna save you a lot of pain, but also including a boat. That's right. Poetically, we are taking <laughs> the uh, the big the big boat and we're crafting it into a smaller boat. And the reason we're doing that is because the fourth important tip is that if you are in an ice-based biome, you can traverse this so much faster. You know, it's fast to jump around on foot, but you can traverse so much faster by getting on a boat because boat plus ice equals no friction. And this is just one of those beautiful features that's been in the game for so long that it's basically a feature now. In fact. Like they've confirmed they won't be removing it because it just feels too right for people. But yeah, we're going to head back towards spawn um, because what is the next step once you've raided your lo local structure or you've just chopped down a tree? What should you do next? And I think the answer is very clear. You need to look for one of two things. Either a ruin portal, I mean, that's a, like some form of ruin portal, lava pit, like access to what will later be the nether, or you can at look for a cave. Sure, nowadays in Minecraft, you can actually find iron at the surface if you have a stony beach. So we could make the jump straight to iron now. You know what, should we make the jump to iron now? Yeah, sure, why not? If you're next to some stony beaches, you might get lucky and find some iron there. And also some coal and do all the things that you need to do. Should have brought my crafting table with me, because now I can't make a stone pickaxe. That's a big mistake, huh? So yeah, as I go to chop down another tree because of my silly mistake, I should point out the sixth tip is after you have you know, found your stone, you've found even potentially your iron if you're lucky like me, the next thing you're going to need is food. Sure, I have carrots, I have potatoes, I even have suspicious stew, but most people are going to start running out of food and it's going to start causing you issues. So find a plains biome. In this case, you can tell it's a plains biome because of the tall grass and the color of the, uh, the, the, the actual grass blocks themselves. Uh, but also, if you find a forest, you should be able to find some number of sheep, chickens, etc. there. Uh, you want to find as many animals as you can and you want to 
kill them uh, because obviously raw meat is the easiest food to get early on in the game. It's not that great for you compared to its cooked version, but you're gonna be making a furnace soon anyway, so you should be able to take care of that. I actually like to use the wooden pickaxe specifically for killing mobs because this is going to be uh, literally used to mine three blocks ever, or maybe even five or six, but this is going to be a, a, a tool that you only use three times, so you might as well use it as a slightly better weapon um, than your fist because it obviously does two attack damage as opposed to one. But like I said, the moment you can make a stone pickaxe, the use for this wooden pickaxe basically goes away altogether. There's one little exception for that, which I always love to use, and you'll notice uh, speedrunners like to use, but you might as well do it yourself because it is just a tiny bit more use than you're otherwise expecting, because once you've found eight cobblestone, you can craft a furnace. Wow, are you familiar with this? This is such an amazing thing. But no, you, you, you what you do is you place into the furnace, let's say your uh, iron ore, and you can smelt that same iron ore, or even your food, whatever it is you want, you can smelt that using your wooden pickaxe as a fuel. It's slightly better than not using anything. It's of course better to use coal all the way, but if you have a wooden pickaxe lying around anyway, why not declutter your inventory and do some real mining at the same time? Also, this is why I try not to use <laughs> stone features. We only got two iron, and now the odds of us finding more are gonna be pretty slim. But still, we'll, we'll cook it up anyway, make a sword or something. This is a bit of a chaotic situation on our first day, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Pro tip, did you know mobs can only attack you once per second, which means once you've been hit, you can kind of run in and out somewhere. It's terrifying to do, but it might be useful for you. And uh, speaking of things that are terrifying, being outside at night. So what I recommend you do, if you haven't already found a cave, is find one quickly and head inside, because caves are dark all the time, whereas the outside is only dark at night. Which means, if you head down there, you'll actually be, in a relative sense, safer. Also, just for the fun of it, this, this isn't a tip, but if you have suspicious stew, it gives you a random effect. So, let's see what random effect we get from this. Oh, night vision! See that? That's actually perfect. It's only like, a few seconds off it, but that could have really helped us out. Maybe. <laughs> But yeah, we're looking for a cave entrance, and all of these things could be cave- Okay, this is actually just a cave entrance. Um, the, the sign is obviously when the terrain starts to go down a little bit. You'll start to see uh, some form of big crack in the ground, and oftentimes, if it's a big enough crack this size, it'll take you all the way down to Diamond Lair, should you want diamonds. And if you don't want diamonds, it'll take you to wherever you do want to go, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, because also there's lava sources, there's glow lichens, they can actually be pretty well lit up, and also they can contain enough iron to actually make a pickaxe out of, which is what we're here for today. Or in case you have issues seeing it, there's there's the iron right there. I think I think torches um, are very, very, very useful, um, especially if you have issues seeing. But a better thing to do, the free version of a torch, is just to turn up your brightness slightly. In fact, most Minecraft players play with their brightness as high as they reasonably can. As you can see, looking at mine, I think it's 50%. No, it's at 100. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you're playing with brightness and anything less than 100, uh, you're just giving up valuable information. This is something people do in every game, and I'll admit that, like, you know, is it the way the game's meant to be played? You could argue not, but being able to get around caves without using torches is just incredibly handy. So turn up your brightness or your gamma setting, depending on which version you play, and uh, you, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll appreciate it. Did you know you can also get a source of light just by cooking up uh, a furnace? When a furnace is turned on, it does emit light. So does redstone and all forms of other blocks. And uh, as long as there is any amount of light nearby, mobs cannot spawn. Glow lichen, lava, everything will prevent light uh, mob spawns because as of 1.18, the minimum light level required is just zero. So that means any amount of light stops mobs, which is a really, really handy tip if you didn't know already. If you ever need to smelt less than eight items, it might be more effective just to use wooden planks or any wooden tools. Or even, if you want to, this one's a bit silly, but you can use bowls as a furnace fuel. Uh, again, the many uses of bowls do not need do not need to be explained to you all the time, I'm sure. But as you can see, uh, that bowl, which we got for free, is now going to also fuel our furnace enough to get uh, cooked mutton to me. We're going to continually head down in this cave. The reason you want to head down and down and down as much as you can, it's quite easy to do, and as long as you're not taking more than three blocks of fall at a time, you won't take damage. So, do you see that? That's three blocks down. That's actually four. So I took half a heart full. This is three blocks down, and so I don't take any damage. If you want to avoid damage, just fall three or less blocks at a time. And that will help you to descend caves like this. On the way up, we can use blocks and stack ourselves out. But on the way down, just make sure you're avoiding damage, because you don't want to die uh, to your own mistakes. 
Once you're at the very bottom of the cave, you should be somewhere about minus 40 to minus 50 on the Y axis. This is something which you can check if you have coordinates enabled on Bedrock. And if you don't have coordinates enabled, then you should be seeing a lot of deep slate. And this is your sign that you might find diamonds somewhere near here. It's a big mite. You have to do a little bit of exploration, but it shouldn't be too hard for you to do. And yeah, you're not guaranteed to find diamonds. It's just, yeah, you, you know, probably eventually, you know, enough time and effort. It's gonna happen. Uh, sometimes it's annoying to bridge over gaps like this. I physically cannot get up and over there, or maybe I can. And uh, if you've got mobs chasing, uh, you're breathing down your neck, it can be terrifying. Just kind of act calmly. You know, act, saying act calmly is a lot easier said than done. Pro tip, mobs always follow you. So lead them away from where you want to be. And then you can just kind of walk around them back right over there. And now I can use these two blocks, make a little pillar up. And now I'm over and I'm looking for diamonds over here too. Next pro tip. Okay, actually, uh, do you see my hunger bar? It's super low. You want to have a high hunger at all time if you're a newish player, just so you can immediately regenerate. And so rather than eating all good food, cooked mutton, cooked pork, uh, this sort of stuff, what I recommend doing is eat your garbage food, your carrots, if you have them, you know, you can eat potatoes. You could really cook these up first, but eat your, your garbage food until you have been the hunger radius of just one of your good food, let's say a cooked mutton. And now you'll get all the saturation benefits, which if you don't understand, it's the long-term healing benefits off the cooked mutton without having wasted two or three of these and instead having used your garbage food, but getting, you know, it's, it's like um, you ate garbage food, but you had all the benefits as if you had eaten good food all of the way, saving your good stuff for when it's necessary. So yeah, if your caving expedition is unsuccessful, in my case, I haven't found diamonds. I've just found a lot of mobs, all of whom seem to want to kill me. Wow, can't we just be friends? What happened to the good old days when we would just talk? Um, what I actually recommend doing in this case is just heading out. You know, if you don't find diamonds, they're not actually essential to beating Minecraft. I know that like, you know, that's not what uh, people on the internet will say. That's not what the Minecraft memes will imply. But honestly, if you have enough iron, you don't need diamonds. Uh, in most cases, iron is just slightly worse than diamonds. And so take the iron that you have found in your adventure, maybe mine a bit more because you need at least three for a bucket and you need at least one for a flint and steel. Eh, even that you don't need, but you should have one for flint and steel. And then you're gonna want two for an iron sword. So six iron is the minimum, but if you can get another 24 on top of that, you can craft full armor, and that's gonna be useful, especially if you're a new player. So if you can't find diamonds, iron is fine, trust me. So as we come back out of the same way we came in, it's very easy to do, and as long as you have a sense of direction, you should be able to do this just fine. As we do this, uh, I want to quickly mention that if you want to follow along and do this yourself, um, then all you need to do is use the same seed that we did. That's what the seed box means when you generate a world. It means that you'll get the exact same world upon generation that we started with. And that world is 101 tips. It's on screen right now. And uh, then you can follow along this exact same thing. But all of these tips are deliberately designed to be for any world. <laughs> See, this is a scary place to get into a fight because we can take full damage or we can force the zombies to take full damage, which is what I want to do instead. So the great thing about iron being so much more abundant than diamonds is if you do leave the cave with your tail between your legs, you haven't found diamonds yet, you know, you could go branch mining, but it's not necessary. Um, then the, uh, the interesting thing to mention is the fact that on the way out, you're going to find all forms of iron that you didn't notice on the way in because of your different perspective. And so it's cool to know that even though you went so deep and you, you took some risks, it wasn't for nothing, you did get some benefit. Oh, two skeletons have trapped me in this corner. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible situation to be in. So yeah, the trick with skeletons, by the way, pro tip, oh, there's so many of them. What, are, how are there so many skeletons? What you're gonna do to get out of the situation, if there is a skeleton directly in range, you wanna attack him. But otherwise, you're running away if you have a easy shot out of there. But otherwise, you wanna have some blocks in your inventory at all times. I'm dumb and I don't. And you wanna use those to get yourself just away from these things. They're following me. They are following me into this cave. Uh, eat, that was so unnecessarily stressful. <laughs> So now that we're back on the surface, we can do our all-important smelting. I didn't grab a single coal while I was down there, which is fine because you can just, if you want to, use your planks and then chop down some uh, trees yourself later. I know people always love to mention that charcoal is so great, but honestly, if you're th in this early game stage where you know you're going to have real coal later, you can just wait for that to happen. Or, because again, look, look how commonly you'll find coal just in the side of the terrain. Now I will never need to make charcoal because there's a wonderful mineable supply of regular coal right here. Um, charcoal is great, but also just use planks and chop them down. Uh, it'll save you a little bit of time and effort maybe, 
even if it's slightly less efficient. Pro tip, you don't need charcoal if it's just for a one-time smelt to get you on your feet and going where you want to be going. And uh, yeah, let's let's actually show you that armor is the amazing thing. Always craft the chest plate first. If you have enough to craft a chest plate, craft that first. Obviously, this is after you crafted a bucket, the most important item. But craft a chest plate first, with the reasoning being that this provides the most armor. To give you a different uh, an idea, these these leather leggings, which is an unfair comparison, but leather leggings provide me with one little armor bar, whereas the iron chest plate provides me with three. That is a 24% reduction in the damage you take just with having one piece of gear on. You want to have the chest plate on first. Maybe a more fair comparison would be the leather, uh, the iron leggings, which are the second best piece of gear. As you can see, they give me two and a half, but they only take seven versus... You know, if you think about the per iron ingot ratio of armor, it's always going to be best with this. Anyway, so we're going to use the last bits of iron to craft myself a pickaxe, which will be useful, and also to craft myself a sword. You're going to want a sword at some point. You know, fighting mobs with an axe is fine, but four damage for this, six damage for this. Given that we're going to the nether, we're going to want to have this uh, somewhere in there. Having a good, having good gear will save you a lot of pain later down the line. It's not everything in combat. In fact, it's not even most things. As you saw, I managed to escape those skeletons with just a stone axe. But uh, yeah, it's important. The other thing you can do to protect yourself that I'm not a big fan of myself, but that really does help, is a shield. So get a shield, put it in your offhand slot. Now whenever you crouch or on Java, hold the right mouse button in, you'll get the shield, or you crouch and it does the same thing. It's it's very useful. It allows you to dodge almost every attack in Minecraft. Why would you not want to do it? The answer is because you're stupid. So um, yeah, next up, we want to go to the nether. It seems a bit premature to be going to the nether, you know, 25, 30 minutes into starting a world. But honestly, if you have a bucket, you have some amount of armor, and you have a sword, you are more than ready. It doesn't feel like it, but trust me, you are. So now the only question is, how do you get there? This bucket is magical because it means that one of two things can happen that allows you to go to the nether. Either you bring lava to water, now you can go to the nether, or you bring water to lava. Lava is found in large amounts in deep caves, but it's also found on the surface in the form of surface lava. The real pro tip is, is make sure you don't go to sleep in a white bed. We all know white beds are inferior. You can't be dealing with that on your first night. Do you want to be made fun of by your friends and family? You don't. That's why you get some amount of dye and you craft yourself a bed with it. It's just nice, right? And uh, yeah, pro tip everyone else forgets. The actual pro tip that will be number 20 here, I guess, is the fact that did you know um, that you can just sleep anywhere in the world? You don't need a house. You don't need anything like that. You just need separation between you and mobs, but that's easily done by just running away from mobs. So uh, if I really want to, right over here, I can sleep. And uh, this means that later on, we can make our permanent fixed first house. But for now, it's not important. What's important is going to the nether, defeating the ender dragon, getting some wings and whatever. Uh, you, anyone can make a house anytime, but those are the things that you want to be focusing on. If you ever start freezing, it gets really scary and you can be worried about what to do. Just start punching the blocks in front of you. I'll show you that again. Uh, you're standing down, you're in some real deep snow, and it's like, oh no, what do I do? Just punch the snow blocks and then you unfreeze. Very easy, no problems whatsoever. If you have a bucket with you, like you should, you can scoop it up. But again, we all make mistakes, easy enough to avoid by just using either punching any, any form of block. You don't need a tool. Just worry about punching the blocks first. Don't worry about getting anything from it and then doing that. So anyway, but the, the next pro tip is how do we look for lava or a ruined portal? Those are the two ways we're going to the nether and uh, we have no sign of either of them right up here. Um, all I can say is that if you see mountains around you, those are hard to climb. Did you see how much trickier it was to climb this than it would be for that. So what you want to do is you want to avoid mountains and just kind of head, let's say, vaguely that direction because you can see it's relatively flat. We might have to go on top of the trees, but try and find the flattest way out, but still be high up so you can look for, uh, you know, the telltale signs of lava or you can look for, um, you know, a ruined portal, which stands out much greater in my opinion. Oh, uh, this one is giant. There's no way somewhere in this there isn't some sign of lava. I say that, but... Actually, maybe there is some way that that's true. Yep, not a single sign of lava, which is fine. We can keep moving. Uh, it doesn't matter if you spend five or ten minutes looking for this. It's time worth spending. Also, if you do happen to find any easy to grab uh, lava or water sources, you might as well take at least one of them on your way because it can save you some effort later. In this case, this water is very easy to obtain. So we scoop it up. And now we're good. If you're next to the ocean, you could also grab the water from there. Uh, and water is useful for all sorts of things, including climbing out of caves. 
So if you find yourself in a situation like this, wanna wanna get out, just use water. It's nice and easy. This is this is so fun. I this is this is this is one of my favorite uses for water that just goes underrated. Because how often do you need to climb out of a cave? Not very often, but try to use water if you do. I mean you can do whatever you want. No one can tell you what you can and cannot do, but you are watching a tutorial video, so you know, just keep that in mind. So the search has been pretty unsuccessful so far. Um, we're about five minutes in and we haven't found a single sign of lava or a ruined portal. And the terrain has now become mountains or rivers. In this case, I'd say follow the river. And that means we have to craft another boat because I think mine is filled with drowns right now. <laughs> oh, they're hugging. Isn't that nice? At this stage in our run, we can also decide whether we want to cook up food the lame way every single time we want it, or we want to do something much more interesting. If you want to do the easier way, what I recommend doing is breaking some gravel. If you have a shovel, this gets easier. And just continue to break the, sh uh, the gravel over and over again until you get flint. This is a 1 in 10 chance, so we could be here for a while. And uh, the wonderful thing you can do with flint is it will actually save us the whole process of using coal and all that stuff because you combine flint and steel, let's say, and you get something called a flint and steel. Now, if you use the flint and steel, it's a little bit unethical. In fact, our, our chicken has run away from the mere idea of it. It's a little bit unethical if you think that your uh, food shouldn't die a painful death. But if you don't mind that because it's a video game, then you know what you do? You kill the chicken on fire. And if an animal dies on fire, they dropped a cooked version off themselves. Cooked chicken, wow, ready to go. Which is, it's oh so handy in my opinion. Did you know your shield is up the entire time while you're riding a horse or a boat? And this is really handy if you're trying to dodge attacks, but if you want vision, it can be a bit annoying. In this case, I recommend switching perspective. This is F5 on a keyboard or the left stick on a, on a, a controller. If you're playing on a phone, well, you know what? I'm sorry. It's it's a lot more tricky. So just, you know, ignore this one. Maybe unequip the shield. Um, but yeah, if you uh, this, this gives you a slightly wider field of view, which means you might spot any, uh, you know, things in the corners that otherwise you wouldn't. It's been a full Minecraft day at this point, and we haven't had any luck. However, it's not such a big deal to spend 10 minutes looking around because in this time you might find a village, you might find somewhere you want to later come back to to build a house. Like, look at this Savannah mountain range. Doesn't that just inspire you? If it doesn't, I guess that <laughs> that's fine too. But um, yeah, eventually we should start to find villages or any form of other structures that are useful. We're getting some exploration done that is just happening to be unsuccessful in the nature of finding lava. Also, when night comes, the moment it comes before even any mobs spawn, just place down your bed, go to sleep, and you can skip it immediately. You don't want phantom spawning, you don't want any of that stuff really, and so you can avoid all danger by just always having a bed in your inventory and being willing to place it at the moment of daybreak. Is daybreak when day ends? Or is that when day starts? I should go on a camping trip in the real world, but only use Minecraft advice and see how far it gets me. You know, like punch wood to make a tent and uh, I know set fire to the local wildlife because that's how you get tasty food. You know, this is a this is a bad idea. I've I've decided not to do that. We've traveled literally three thousand blocks from spawn at this point, I think, and I found my first village. So uh, that's pretty swell, huh? I guess we'll head to that village. So now we've arrived at a village. It's taken us, you know, r roughly. Uh, for Minecraft days to be here, but if you come here on your first date and you're looking for food, pro tip, don't punch these hay bales with your hands, because although you can do that, it's actually slightly better if you grab your crafting table and instead you craft a hoe. A stone hoe will do just nicely, and if you break these with a stone hoe, they'll go much faster. The reason you're going to want to break these hay bales at all, I should say actually, to give you another bonus tip in one here, is the fact that you can take hay bales and turn them into wheat. You should know this from some, all sorts of different things, but you take the hay bales, you turn them into wheat, and then you can turn that wheat straight into bread. Now I have 45 bread, which even though I have these lovely cooked uh, beef sauces, it's a lovely backup food that means I'll never starve now because I've got so much food. I mean, I won't starve if I'm not actively eating bread. But like, yeah, it's, it's a good backup. Also, the village is where you get some free iron, should you need it, because this guy drops three to five when he dies. I'm gonna leave him alive though, because he's <laughs> he's avoiding my gaze. And you know what, maybe that's enough reason to die actually. He disrespected me, man, what can I say? There's so many potion brewers in this one village, by the way. It's not very useful, but it is a cool little fact. Um, yeah, villages are filled with all sorts of other useful things, because as well as having these useful blocks you can use, they also just have chests which contain 
Okay, in this case, just seeds. <laughs> um, but yeah, the other amazing thing about villagers is if you're having a hard time finding lava, like I am, you've got about a 1 in 10 chance of digging down below one of these things and finding your stronghold. So I always recommend having ladders prepared just in case. But if you want to just live life on the edge, I wouldn't blame you for that. Okay, here's another chest. See, more bread. The villagers are just a perpetual sources of bread, as it turns out. But um, yeah, what I actually recommend doing, besides uh, dumping your garbage in their chests, is um, using the villagers as a great point to dig down from. I'm going to go down from the center point of this village to give myself the best chance of finding something. Um, and again, it's a low chance, but it's always worth doing. Because strongholds try to spawn below villagers, you are more likely to find one if you dig down. Again, bedrock only on that fact. Important to note, if you're playing Java, this is about as likely as digging down from anywhere else. But if you're playing bedrock, you might find a big body of water. So yeah, before attempting to do this, make sure you have your bucket, preferably filled with water already. Um, because if you do find a stronghold, which we're not going to bank on, but it's always possible. If you do find your stronghold though, you're going to want to have that pre-prepared. And yeah, this can be as low as minus, I don't know, minus 30, minus 40. I imagine you can even get strongholds that go even lower than that. But yeah, once you get down to about deep slate layer, you know you're probably not going to find the thing. Yeah, we're at minus 54. We haven't found a stronghold. I guess there isn't one around here. If you really want to do a last ditch effort because you, you feel certain or something, you could start digging around. But I really wouldn't recommend it unless you're quite sure. You know, maybe you've... You've thrown your ender piles already, your eyes of ender, I should say, because you're most likely just going to be digging around and finding a ton of deep slate, which isn't the most productive use of your time, given that you've got a dragon that you need to kill. So let's just pick up the deep slate blocks and then let's stack ourselves out here. Hey, guess who just found some diamonds? Oh, not just one diamond, not just two diamonds, not just three, but four. What do I even do with that? Like make myself a... a I guess I could make a diamond pickaxe and... For now, I think it's worth storing. Until you go to the nether, you don't need a diamond sword. Let's be real with ourselves. So we took a bit of a risk by digging down for the stronghold, but it's going to be perfectly fine. Eventually, we'll find a lava pit above ground, or maybe even a ruined portal. It doesn't really matter which one. I said earlier I didn't have a preference. I've changed my mind. Finding a ruined portal is so much better than finding a lava pit, and let me show you why. First things first, we get this chest, which can contain gold in these cases. Um, you're really going to want to have a piece of gold armor if it's your first time going to the nether or you're just not so comfortable. It can contain flint and steel, but it also can contain obsidian. Those things together really do make something quite amazing. There's also a silk touch pickaxe, should you want it. Um, you can get some really good loot from these chests, but also there's kind of less pressure uh, to mess up or not here because there's a ton of lava you can use in the exact same way you would in a uh, lava pit just to show you how to do that in case you're curious you dig a hole in the ground we'll make it like I don't know two blocks wide for now and then we'll replace this with some gravel and then we're going to stack ourselves up and then all we have to do is place the water off the edge here in such a way that it flows down specifically only filling this hole and then we could take the lava and fill it into each of these slots. However, uh, when the uh, when you have a ruined portal, you're not just committed to doing the lava technique, but you can do things in a more fun way should you want to by, again, if we, we have diamonds, we can make a diamond pickaxe. Uh, that way you can just make obsidian and save yourself some effort. There's all sorts of other things we can do. Actually, today I'm gonna do the old school method just because the fact that it's a reminder, you should count the amount of lava you have before doing it. We're gonna need at least uh, actually, at most 10 blocks because we have two obsidian on us. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's more than 10 pieces of lava, and so we're good to go. So you just move the lava, and when you place lava next to water, it either creates stone, depending on the direction, or obsidian. And as long as you do it this way with a lava source, you'll be able to create obsidian, which is much, much more useful. And so we'll do that on both sides. Make a lovely 3x3 portal, because did you know you can make nether portals of any size between 2x3 and... 21 by 21, I think it is. It truly is amazing when you uh, think about it that you can just, using one bucket, create yourself a never portal from scratch. In fact, it's amazing even more than that, in my opinion, the fact that this is genuinely just the normal way that most people would do this at this stage in Minecraft. Like, yeah, this is how you make a never portal. This at one point was one of those real big pro tips, but fortunately, the proliferation of uh, speedrunning and speedrunning types has made this more common knowledge 
which is a good thing for everyone in my opinion because all we have to do is that and we can now light ourselves a portal I recommend having a flint and steel again if you're early into Minecraft just save yourself some pain just make the flint and steel but if you want to do something a bit more fun and, and you want to know a, pro, a, a fun little tip here uh, all you have to do is light fire to some wood we'll use acacia planks for this and uh, you can do that by using a bucket and using some lava. If you have any spare lava, just grab it, place it near the wood, and fun fact, the wood will catch fire. Then once the wood has caught fire, try and have it go to like the center, uh, just like this. Okay, well, don't don't block the portal like I've done here, but you just wanna have the, the, the fire spread from the wood to the portal, which it will eventually do, allowing you to go to the nether without needing a flint and steel. But again, it, if, you, if you wanna avoid the pain, because it can be a bit tricky um, when you're trying to follow a YouTube video on that, just, just, just bring a flint and steel. Or don't. I'm not gonna be your dad. Wait. So we're now in the nether. We already have gold armor, but if you don't, now is a good time to get it. Pro tip, um, all around the nether, you'll find these little gold, uh, nether gold ores. They only drop a few gold nuggets each, but you can mine them with even a stone pickaxe. Just, even if you have a wooden pickaxe, you can mine these, and you'll get a few little gold nuggets here and there, which can be really useful. You will anger any piglins that are nearby, so... Keep your eye out for that. But yeah, come to the nether, mine some uh, gold nuggets, get yourself one piece of gold armor, doesn't matter if it's the helmet or the boots, but make sure you use one of the lesser slots to, to get that done, it's, it's very important. If piglins do come after you and you happen to have some gold ingots on you, drop them on the ground. This is a really useful tip because they will distract the piglins for as long as there is gold on the ground and it will also help you with something we're doing later on in the game, which is getting ender pearls. The easiest way to get ender pearls uh, is to trade with piglins. Um, it's a bit random though, so it's not everyone's preferred method, but it's the way that involves the least pain because all you've got to do is give them stuff and they'll give you stuff, sometimes including um, everyone's favorite thing, ender pearls. In this case, as you can see, it hasn't ended up that way, but I did get a ton of barrows, so that's nice. Also some leather, so... Oh, and we got some soul speed boots. We're not gonna wear them solely because I want to keep my gold on. The reason we're going to keep gold on us is because if you have gold on and you've done nothing to upset the piglins, they won't attack you. As you can see, they see me as a friend because they say, see I also value my, my gold boots right here. And so yeah, that's a handy thing. Another essential thing you should do before leaving where you've uh, placed your portal is working out exactly where that is. Write down these coordinates if you need to. This is your way back to the safe place and you don't want to get lost on the way back. If you run out of food, if you start nearly dying and you want to come back with better gear, then you need to know where that is. You shouldn't need that if you've uh, followed all the tips so far, but it's essential you write down your coordinates just in case. And uh, yeah, this next tip is one that is kind of blurring the line between like, is this pure survival or is this like outside uh, tool? So the next thing we're going to need to do is to find a never fortress. The never fortress is literally required to beat Minecraft and they can be spread apart up to a thousand blocks away from each other here in the nether. So finding them is very important, but also can be very hard because the nether has a tiny render distance compared to the overworld. And so what do you do about this? The simplest answer, the easiest answer I should say, is um, you know, like, go on chunkbase.com. If you type in your seed, you'll be able to uh, find where the nearest nether fortress is. So we go to chunkbase.com, we go to apps, and we go to nether fortress. Again, you don't have to do this, I'm just saying. it's a if, if it's one of those steps that annoys you, it's something you can do. And it tells me there's a nether fortress at... Uh, wait, oh, I haven't typed in my seed yet. That's, that's something you want to do. 101 tips. And it tells you, if we're on bedrock 1.18, that there's another fortress at X34, uh, Z-234, which... Actually, it's, it's 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 a relatively far away way. Oh, and while you're looking for a nether fortress, you might just be lucky enough to find a bastion remnants or a piglin bastion, or whatever you want to call it. This place is a very dangerous place to be in, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and you might want to skip it um, for the sake of <laughs> you're not dying. But uh, the piglin bastion has high rewards in the form of the chests, which are found in the center, but also in that they all have gold blocks hidden around the place because piglins are hoarders. And so that means you can just get yourself a whole block. That's nine gold ingots, uh, as easy as that. And then by just building around the place, which we want to do very carefully because piglins have crossbows. I was just about to mention that. In fact, I was mentioning that at the time. Uh, yeah, it's something you want to be very, very cautious of because, yeah, just, you know, why would you deal with this if you didn't have to? Oh, there's one over here too. So let's just, let's just knock him over and then none of them can get to me now. 
You could do this for all of the gold blocks, but again, you're playing with fire. If you're if this if you are a beginner, you want to defeat the Ender Dragon for the first time. Just accept that these are scary places you shouldn't spend too much time in, and you'll probably have a better time. If you are going to do that decision though, make sure that when you do find gold as you're running across these biomes, you take some space and you mine it. You can obviously mine gold in the overworld, and it's probably going to be slightly more effective for you. But uh, again, if, you, if, you're, if you're feeling safe, you've got your shield, and you're in a relatively flat open place, you're going to need this gold at some point. It's going to save you a lot of enderman killing, so why not? Take advantage of it right now. You are going to wear through your pickaxes very quickly if you do this, so just be warned, you're going to need to have a backup plan for a second iron pickaxe or uh, for a just, just you know, a diamond pickaxe. I think that's where we're going to go on this one, solely because I have the diamonds and it will allow me to finally get rid of uh, this darn <laughs> stone pickaxe that's been plaguing my inventory. But yeah, your, your own decision is important here. Just make sure whatever you do, you convert it into gold ingots quite regularly. Uh, partially because it saves inventory space, and partially because it's going to allow us to trade with any piglins we run across. In fact, here's a clever way you can double up on uh, mining gold and trading gold, because every single time you mine one of these blocks and a piglin is around, it will force them to complete their trade early, meaning you can actually trade even faster like this. If you're not a speedrunner, it's not essential, but it's a cool tip to know. If you ever find yourself not able to make any more progress in the direction you want to go, you know, I want to go over there, I think there might be a nether fortress that way, um, try mining upwards or downwards. I usually don't recommend downwards, because, I mean, there's lava down there, but if you mine upwards, uh, you'll usually find yourself into a new layer of something. This doesn't always work, and this is why you really need to have a good pickaxe for the the, uh, the nether. This is the real reason you want a diamond pickaxe, just for the durability that it has, but still, it's uh, you want to make sure you head upwards, Maybe pick up the gold on the way. But yeah, you want to head upwards and uh, you should hopefully find something else. A, a sign that there might be stuff up there is the sound of mobs walking around above your head. In this case, those mobs were actually just magma cubes in a little cave. But this cave then itself leads to the outside world as you can see over here. Okay, here's an opportunity for me to illustrate the thing about piglins I was talking about earlier. We throw all of our 32 gold ingots on the ground, which is a healthy number in my opinion. We throw those on the ground and eventually they'll head toward us. And in fact, we'll craft even more right now. We'll craft an extra 21, throw them all on the ground, and then to get the piglins angry with me, we mine some of this gold. Why would we do that? Because every single time we mine it, we force a trade from the piglins, although there's only one of them right there right now. Th this is a nice uh, drop, by the way, getting fire resistance. But yeah, we want to ideally aggravate them all into coming this way, where the gold is. And so we can get the most out of our mining blocks to, to make the trades actually happen. There we go. And so by spending just a few seconds mining some blocks, we got some serious progress in those trades, and we didn't get a single end of pearl. Yeah, this is, I, I would describe this as the least aggressive way to go to the end, um, because it's really chill to get gold uh, in most cases. You can even do it in the overworld, and uh, this saves having to kill Endermen, who of course are known for their uh, mysterious and painful exploits. And so yeah, you, you can do this. Give it a try. The next pro tip here relates to splash potions. Mm -hmm. Did you know that if you throw a splash potion on the ground or on like the wall and then walk into it, you won't get anywhere near as much effect as if you throw a splash potion up in the air at your head. Actually, I'll prove this because we've got a couple around me. This is what happens when I throw one up the ground. As you can see, I get 1 minutes and 26 of splash fire resistance. If you throw this at your face and you actually succeed, oh my gosh. Then as, uh, all of a sudden, instead of one minute, we got two minutes and 11 seconds. And now we can stand in fire and enjoy all the wonderful things. Fire resistance is a really good potion. And the fact that you get it for free from piglins is a really nice piece of uh, gameplay, in my opinion. We did not get a single ender pearl, but here's the more important issue we have. We see a nether fortress. I would like to get to it. What is the safest way? If it is right out in the middle of an ocean, you really want to try as many alternative routes as you can. Look around, and in this case, you can see that it's directly connected to the ground. This is so much better for us because it means less opportunity to fall off and die, you know, get knocked off by a gas fireball. Just, there's lots of things in the nether that can hit you, and so if you're in a place where things hitting you doesn't cause you to die, that's a good place to be, in my opinion. So as you can see, I'm now in the nether fortress, and all I've got to do is fight the blazes, except oh no, there's also some wither skeletons. What do you do about those? Um, honestly, pro tip here is uh, just find one of these hallways that exist everywhere, make a free block, uh, make a block height ceiling like that, and because they're free blocks height, they won't be able to reach you, which I just always love to see, personally, like, yeah, 
You want to fight me? You can't. I can hit you. You can't hit me. And as long as you stand back the right distance, you can in fact do that as much as you like. Getting some coal, some stone swords, and whatever else you care about. But yeah, I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to get closer to where the blazes are, because the big open parts of the Never Fortress are where the blazes tend to have their spawners. As you can see, this is a blaze spawner. This is where you want to be, because you need to kill at least 10 blazes to go to the... This is just an essential part of every run. You need to kill blazes to get blaze rods. This is still the only way in Minecraft that you can get blaze powder, which is essential to go to the end. It's interesting that it's been so long, and that's true, but you need a blaze spawner, and you usually find these on the big open bits like this. I recommend building yourself a little safe place just around that. So I, I build something like this, a little hallway, and then I'll build a second one next to it, just like this. Um, maybe like off to the, oh gosh. <laughs> but I, I, I like to build myself some form of safe space where I can be safe from attack on either side, because a lot of bad things will come through here. And so the easiest thing to do is just build a little corner that you can hide behind. Except now, you might be under attack from uh, blazes on this side. So also what you then do is you build more blocks this way. And now as you can see, oh no! See, and you can avoid situations like that. I also could probably just get my shield out ready for these attacks. But yeah, you want to avoid situations where you can be attacked from multiple angles. The never is dangerous enough when you're being attacked from one angle. You really don't need to add two to it. So having a little safe place like this is just a smart idea. You can even place a door down to make it even safer from blazes because they will walk in if they see you go in there. And that's not what you want in life in general. So yeah, when you stand here, be 100% focused on killing the blazes as soon as they spawn. You have a few seconds before an attack comes in and if you can kill them before that attack, they are effectively harmless. They can only attack you physically until they've charged up their fireballs. So kill blazes in the first, you know, seven seconds when they spawn and you will not be attacked. It's a little bit manic and it means you have to stand in a corner and look very, very carefully. But as long as you do this and as long as you're aware when you're not going to do this and just run away to your little safe zone, you'll be fine. Also, try to get critical hits. You get a critical hit, which has those white sparkles. Um, when you attack an enemy, when you're falling downwards, this gives you 50% more damage. and means you can usually kill them in one fewer hit, which is really, really handy, uh, I would say. So yeah, critical hits. They're, they're simple. Everyone knows how they work. But in the nether, they're not just fun. They are critical. Like this. You know, you see that? Oh, I can't get them. And I'm going to die as a result. I didn't die. You'll be pleased to know. So the never is the one place where I recommend eating as inefficiently as you like. Just make sure you're always at full hunger because on bedrock, there is no fast healing. No matter how much food you have in the belly, you're still going to heal at this exact same rate. Oh my gosh, I'm done. It's, it's dead. It's, I'm over. So what do you do when you die? This is one of the big questions you're going to have. And fortunately, I died in the most obvious place to show you exactly what happens. Definitely not intentionally. So first things first, bring food. If you don't have enough food, you'll die on the journey just for hunger. Second of all, to get back to where you're going to be, you probably needed blocks or something along those lines. I'd recommend making just a stone sword or anything else you can find, like have some form of tool ready with you. Just some form of aggressive weapon, some form of pickaxe. In this case, I'm going to go with a stone, stone sword, stone pickaxe. Easy as that, and once you have these three things, you should now be, be able to go back to your death space without then re-dying over and over again. It's important that you only, you know, that you only die once if you're going to die, and that you don't get a series of deaths, because that can be demotivating. It has now been more than five minutes since I died, and a lot of people start to panic at this point, but just remember, your stuff only despawns when it's in the simulation distance. You can turn this down in the settings, but it's already going to be 12 chunks at the very max if you're playing Bedrock, and so in reality, your stuff won't despawn until you get close to it. If you spend a long time circling from above, maybe you'll have issues, but um, yeah, right now, I know my stuff isn't even spawned, and so I can spend as long as I like trying to get over to my stuff, and man, is it going to take me some time to work out the way back there. <laughs> if you're worried about remembering coordinates and you don't think you're going to keep track of them, a useful way to make sure that you know you're going in the right direction is to leave some form of breadcrumb trail. In this case, I've dropped a stone pickaxe on the ground, and I've got a crafting table, and those two things uh, alone remind me this is the right direction. But even just placing every now and then, say a dirt block or something like that, is an easy way to make sure that you know when you're heading back and forth to somewhere, and you might go to your Nether Fortress a lot, that you're going in the right direction. Also, piglins now are mad at me because I don't have any gold on me, so just useful pro tip to remember. 
Yeah, honestly, the way I seem to do it is I just place crafting tables everywhere and it's a working strategy because look at all these signs that I've been here that I can totally use to save myself. I'm running very low on bread, so uh, a useful reminder that more food is better than less food because less dying is better than more dying. You know, I'm, I'm such a poet with all these useful pro tips, aren't I? But yeah, I believe just over this hill was where the dev fortress was. I'm correct. Now that five minute timer has started, I really can't afford to just be goofing off and being like, did I go this way? Did I not? You need to know exactly uh, where you died, or at least you need to know with a very decent degree of accuracy where you, how you can get there. Because again, it is, because this is not the time for approximations. Just remember any mob that was around you when you died, <laughs> he's got all my armor on. <laughs> Any mobs that are around you when you died uh, will have despawned, assuming they haven't picked up your armor, in which case I guess they'll be fine. But any mobs that are around you will uh, will be dead because uh, they, they despawn when you're not within a certain radius. The same radius, fun fact, that decides whether or not uh, you can your stuff starts to despawn also decides whether mobs despawn. Okay, so embarrassing situation. I wasn't paying attention and I died and now I'm in the worst of the worst of situations. As you can see, there are mobs on both sides of me and all I have to do is not die to both of them somehow. And so what you want to do in these situations, there's just no way out of that. Oh, this is the stupidest looking thing I think I've ever seen in Minecraft. <laughs> okay, where's the rest of my stuff? I hope it hasn't despawned. Oh no, it's all in half. The time has come to do something that I wasn't looking forward to doing because he's got a shield, but we're gonna fight the zombie piglin. Oh, please give me my stuff back. That's rightfully mine. I don't know why you picked it up. And I don't know why I have to damage it just to pick it from you. But, oh, Lord. Okay, so as soon as we get out of this one alive, which is not a guaranteed thing right now, let's explain exactly what we could have done <laughs> slightly differently. Stop it! <laughs> no! I disagree with your methods. Okay, we got all of our stuff back safely. I'm now fully equipped like the piglin was. And now we can do a post-mortem. Although I'm going to be honest with you, I actually went to get my stuff back and I died the second time. And then while trying to get my stuff back, which I lost the second time, I died for a third time. So three postmortems all in a row. Let's explain what you should have done differently and what I should have done differently. But I was being a little bit too cocky to do because I just assumed I'd had enough safety features. No, that's not enough. With blazers, especially ones that know how to pathfind to you, you need to always be extra, extra aware. So what I recommend doing is having a little form of pathway system, which goes through the Neverack, around the Never Fortress. This is the safest way to be. Make sure it's also covered from the ceiling. This is the safest way to be because blazes aren't gonna know how to follow you through these caves. And so you won't be attacked one after another after another. You are going to be close to death in multiple situations. And you just wanna be ready for that. You wanna be in a situation where that isn't a life ending event for you. So pro tip, Dig tunnels through the caves. It's gonna, this is the best way to get around anywhere in the nether. If you have a tunnel, most mobs can't go through there. And even the ones that do know how to, aren't going to be able to follow it when it's a little bit twisty. It's safer. And it also means if you die, your stuff isn't going to be lit on fire because it's not gonna be able to fall in the lava. So make sure you spend as much of time as possible in these tunnels. Look at this, there's a blaze following me. Oh no, I'm on half a heart. How will I not die? Let's just run through the tunnels. And as you can see, he's not gonna be able to make it up here in any reasonable amount of time, even if he can make it. <laughs> Apparently I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, so I've just dug the tunnels a little bit further this way. And as you can see, now I'm safe. I've got time to shield up, to eat my cooked beef. And when I do go out there again, as you can see, he doesn't, I don't know how he knew to follow me to the bottom of the staircase, but not up the staircase. But as you can see, blazers are really stupid and they don't understand them. He's, he's now vanished, I'm safe again. Why? That was a very unfortunate piece of luck, but still, it's something... Okay, here we go. Two blazers. Are they gonna follow me? Oh, they might. Let's run away from them. And now from here, if we really want to, we could even start mining upwards and just getting away that way. We know that above us is the surface, and so if we just mine up in a nice convoluted way, we know we'll get there fine. In fact, I've got everything that I probably want from an Ever Fortress at this point, so I think we're gonna do precisely that right now. Let's go up to the surface, and let's focus on the other portion we need to beat Minecraft, which is, of course, Ender Pearls. I'm back, and it officially tis the season, am I right? 
Uh, tis the season to get out of the nether because here is my next pro tip for you When you are in the nether and you've achieved what you've wanted to do here get straight out I know that there's a lot of fun things we can explore and find here But as you can probably work out from the very loud ghast as you can probably work out from that uh, Honestly, it is better just to get out and if you're doing exploration Do it with a set of equipment that you don't mind losing if you die because then if you die You don't have to worry about going and getting your stuff. You can just leave it behind that's right if you're exploring the nether, do it with disposable stuff. The only time you should bring your full gear with you is when you're going for the nether fortress. And maybe if you know there is a piglin bastion and you think your gear will give you a slightly better chance of survival, maybe then you should do it then too. Also, uh, be warned, there's lots of things in the nether that can kill you, but that's not really a very good pro tip, is it? The next pro tip is actually going to be about speed bridging. Let's say you're in a dicey situation. This is, I would say, the example of a situation where you don't want to be doing it. But let's say that you need to get away really quickly. You're backed into a corner, and the only way out is to go forwards. What you want to do is you want to know about how bridging works in Minecraft. On Minecraft Bedrock, placing down in front of you just like this counts as placing on the block that is facing inwards towards you just like this, meaning we can actually build a bridge faster than a ghast can fire at us. However, if you are worried about ghasts, and you should be, this is Minecraft, um, then what you can perhaps do instead is obviously eat first, but then use a com uh, make use one of the blocks in Minecraft which cannot be destroyed by ghast fireballs, and as long as you're walking, even at normal pace, as long as you're walking as you do this, you should be just fine, and as you can see, I was fine there. By the way, next pro tip. <laughs> this is one that you can basically never use, but I want to share it with you anyway because it's so cool. If you fall and you're regenerating health at that exact tick, it's something like a 1 in 30 chance, you won't take any full damage. In fact, if you take any damage at the exact moment you're regenerating health, it won't happen. And so that is why you eat food before doing something dangerous, because you've got that 1 in 30 chance that it magically just pays off, and uh, you don't take any damage. And it has saved my life many times. Realistically there, I wouldn't have died from the fall, but I'd be reeling pretty badly right now but no damage because of that. So I'm not gonna be doing any enchanting in this particular run because I don't really think it's necessary. I think it's a great way to stack your odds against the dragon, but I don't think you need to do it is my point. However, if you are going to enchant, just know one of the best sources of XP that an early game player can get is mine never caught around the nether. It is found literally everywhere that there is exposed netherrack, and as long as you're not in too exposed for place, I'd say don't mine here, because you know a ghast is gonna spawn somewhere, but if you're in a nice little cave area like this, then mine the Never Quartz and you get a really healthy amount of XP, one of the best sources in the game, and the very best source that you can get as a player that has no farms, no equipment or anything. If you want to get XP, mine the blocks as you go. In my case, I'm going to be mining the Never Gold Ore, solely because I want to trade it with Piglins to try and get some Ender Pearls. I want to at least leave the Never with two or three Ender Pearls uh, that I take back with me. So just every time we pass some Piglins, uh, let's try not to upset them, but every time we pass some uh, Piglins, we'll try and get a few trades in. Did you know that every time you step onto a magma block, it will burn you, and it's kind of bad? And unless you're wearing fire protection on any form, a potion or a charmant, this is going to be a problem for you, unless you crouch. Crouching, for whatever reason, makes magma not burn you, which I'm not sure I can make full sense of, to be honest with you, but it is a useful pro tip when you're in the nether, and the only way to get somewhere, like these piglins, is across some magma. I'd recommend not bridging across <laughs> this amount of lava on either side, if you don't have a potion with you, but you know, it's something you can do if you want. Here's another useful pro tip. Did you know that nevrak always burns when you light it? You probably do, but here's how you can use that to your advantage, because most mobs, especially ones that aren't never based, don't like running through lava to get to you, or running through fire to get to you, which means if we just uh, go up here, the piglin will try to chase us, but once we light the block on fire, he'll be unable to get to us, meaning he has to stand right there. An easy way to protect yourself from mobs is just to make the path to you unreachable. You can do this with fire, you can do this by placing blocks on the paths they can get there, but yeah, you can really easily get away from danger by just using a couple bits of fire or using a couple blocks of nevrak because you're effectively doing the same thing in either case but yeah it's did you know the flint and steel is useful not just for starting fires but also for preventing them if fires means you know like getting into a fight with a piglin oh he's despawned already well welcome to bedrock 
This next pro tip is one that also seems kind of obvious, but is quite useful just for avoiding danger. Right now, I could probably mine these Never Gold Ore, but something bad could happen. There's a big open space. Who knows what's going to happen to me? So my pro tip is if you're going to be next to lava and the blocks you mine might go into it, just move the lava around. You can change the course of lava just by placing a few handy blocks. And you can also do this to jump over big sections of lava. Pro tip. Placing blocks makes lava go away. It doesn't necessarily make the most sense from a logistical point of view, but it is very, very handy from a getting gold ore without being murdered point of view, which I like. Did you know if you're far enough away from a ghast, you can dodge their fireballs like you could dodge bullets in the matrix? Let me show you what I mean by that. If you just see a ghast, wow, he's literally running away from me. Did you know that if you're far enough away from a ghast, you can dodge his fireballs like you could dodge a bullet in the matrix? As you can see, he, this this guy this ghast is just really really trying to avoid my gaze. You know, what? did you know ghasts don't care about firing at you? But not only can you fire fireballs back at them if you really need to, but also you can just straight up do whatever. You know, is he's gone. It's not my problem. Aha! The reason, by the way, I'm so desperate for ender pearls is so that we can find the stronghold. If we need to get ender pearls and another source later, that's great. But I just kind of want to do it. By the way, I've also ran out of decent food. I'm now solely down to bread. If you're in the never and this happens to you, as it no doubt is going to at some point, here is my pro tip. Did you know you can get a wonderful source of food in the hoglins? Hoglins can be a bit nightmarish because of how big they are and how aggressive they can be. But if you light them on fire before they kill you, which you can do by just lighting the path between them and you and they'll run for it inevitably, uh, you can guarantee that you'll get some cooked pork chops upon murder. And also you get some leather, which you might want. But I'm here for the pork chops. Look at that, I now have... Wait, do I have any? Here we go. Look at that, I now have six pork chops from two hoglins. They are one of the best sources of meat in the game. And if you have looting, it just gets even better. But even if you don't, it's just worth coming here. Even if you take a little bit of damage from killing them, they still work out as a net positive because of just how much high quality food they give you when they're on fire when you murder them. So just make sure they are on fire before doing that. And then slam them down. Man, you are really being persistent on this. But yeah, just make sure they're on fire and you can get some really good stuff when you kill them. In this case, cooked pork chop. Ah, more enderpearls. Six of them now. Yeah, that's enough for me to feel comfortable going back to the overworld. But again, we need to explore in the nether. We can come back here. But for now, things are kind of dicey. Let's get out of this whole situation. Ooh. Bad right now. Burning bad right now. Oh, no, I mined into lava. What are the odds? I... So that is a fun reminder of why you need to be so careful in the never. My home bed is obstructed. I'm thousands of blocks away from my portal, which is hundreds of blocks away from my death site, where none of my stuff remains. We've effectively started from zero after all of that. And like I, you know, this is that fun reminder of why you have to bank your stuff after you've gone to the never. Why it's important to have... Uh, remnants to allow you to survive if something bad happens because if I had just dropped off all my stuff Then that death would have been like oh, no, I lost a pickaxe I guess I'll just move on to other things, but now I can't do any such thing that sucks But I hope you <laughs> enjoyed it anyway because I'll see you next time Goodbye. There's so much pain in my eyes right now. So as you just heard, I wanted to give everything up. I think you can't lose everything in a more direct way than dying in lava, but this next tip is don't give up when this happens. It seems as though once you've lost everything, you can't lose any more, but let me explain to you why that's not true. You still have the knowledge of the world. I know that if I just go for a very long trek through the forest that way, and my God, was it a long trek, that I will eventually find the village and eventually find some food and the nether portal, and that brings us nicely into the next pro tip, by the way. Make sure that if you're going into the nether with this stuff, or any any bad stuff, set your spawn outside of it. If you've died in the nether four times more than you probably should have, then it's a good sign that you should set your spawn right outside that portal. So we're gonna learn from our mistake this time and show you how to take down and get all your blaze rods without taking any damage. We're not gonna go through the, well, it's fine because we're not dead. We're gonna show you the zero tolerance approach to risk. Instead of jumping down or getting down that way, we know there is a big, actually, uh, it looks like we can't get on that this way, but uh, instead of uh, you know heading down in the open where there are ghasts and wither skeletons and magma cubes, we're gonna head down via the rock. 
You can you always want to tunnel in Minecraft if you can because tunnels are safe Very rare for mobs to spawn in here and as long as you're mining ahead of yourself You won't fall in lava, so we're gonna follow this tunnel along uh, We're gonna make ourselves a tunnel rather to some extent and we're gonna use this as our safety mechanism Once again, we're making ourselves a two wide tunnel and we're just trying to make it Oh god a blaze followed me in here and you see that that could have been disaster because I have very little armor and Minecraft is challenging. So yeah, you want to make sure that your tunnel is too wide and has points where most mobs can't get in. The only ones that can get in are blazes if they choose to follow you. And you can use this to your advantage to kind of ambush the blaze when they come up to you. Because he's going to come around this corner. Ah, there he is. And then we can immediately be ready to relieve him of his blaze rod. And now we wait patiently in our hole, knowing that when blazes spawn, we can two-hit KO them, or we can run back in. It's it's really not that hard for challenge. So now that we've got our blaze rods and we're trying to get out of here, do you want to see a useful tip for mining faster? If you've got a pickaxe past a certain speed, especially on Nebrak, you'll instantly mine it. However, even though it's instant mining, you'll see that there's still a speed differential between how fast I want to be mining and how fast I am mining. We can sprout- oh wow, we just found ancient debris. So let's say you're mining for ancient debris or something like that. Um, you want to have the most efficient mining technique possible. And pro tip, that doesn't involve being right next to the blocks that you want to mine. In the Never, that's very dangerous as it is, but also, it's not the fastest way to mine. Instead, the fastest way to mine is to be as far back as possible from the block as you can be. This is because there's no block delay to the next block, which means that, uh, as we've shown in head-to-head -head comparisons, it is a significantly faster mining technique that got us right out here to a cave. I don't know if I want to be in a cave, but it's nice that I'm here anyway, right? Pro tip, did you know falling on a hay bale will prevent a lot of fall damage? Do you know how much falling seven blocks would take? Usually, two hearts of damage. Fall on a hay bale, it's reduced by 90%, and within the rounding error, that takes you down to no damage. This means that if you're going to fall 80 blocks, or even if you're going to fall anything more than 23 blocks, and you don't have feather falling, the only way you can guarantee your survival, the only way you can even have a chance at surviving, is hoping you have a hay bale on you, which is why I always try to bring a hay bale with me to the nether, or anywhere else that there's just big risk of falling. For real, I, I'd show you right now, but I've died enough times today. It's also really handy for shorter falls though, because as you can see, you can run, you can sprint, you can land on the hay bale, and instead of taking a really big damage, which would re leave you at risk, because you're in the never, the, the hell dimension, you'll be perfectly safe. So yeah, we're gonna mine ourselves some gold, not for the trading anymore, I've given up on my, my trading days, uh, because of what happened to those ender pearls, uh, and instead I'm gonna show you the other way that you can get ender pearls in the never. However, to do so will involve doing a little bit of exploration in the nether, and like we've mentioned before, we want to avoid risk at this point. You know, I, I was going in with this whole like, oh yeah, we're never going to die in the nether attitude, and even then we still managed to die, and obviously pro tip, don't die in the nether, but the better pro tip is if you know there is a chance you're going to die, if you're scared of this dimension in the slightest, just make it so that the penalty for death isn't everything goes bad. The penalty for death is I'll lose my diamond stuff and I'll have to go get it, but instead I still will have my stone sword, I'll still have various things to help me out, even if I'm dead, including some blocks to help me get back to where I was. This is important to make the punishment for death not absolute, but instead just, oh yeah, a kind of bad thing will happen. And so yeah, now we can go back into the nether, where absolutely nothing bad will happen to us. Ah! 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 See? It, it, it can happen anytime. So maybe this next one's obvious, but it's useful to know anyway. If you want to go somewhere across and you know that you might die if you try to bridge over, try looking around for alternate ways. As you can see on this side, there's no way over. But if, you, if I go left, all I have to do is go up and over, make a much shorter bridge, and then I can get to the exact same place. And to me, that is worth trying. So I'm going to do that right now. It's a little tense having to bridge over some lava, but I know if I die here, I'm going to make it. And so, as simple as this, we've gone out there, and we've even found a new food source, which is probably ideal, honestly. Oh, maybe we haven't. <laughs> Pro tip, if you're worried about mobs killing you, have you ever tried just stacking up a few blocks? If you're high enough up, they can't do anything to you, and you can eat and get your health back with absolutely no worries. If you're worried about ranged mobs attacking you, what you should do is you should stack out in front of you, and just make a little box up here. Now you're even safer from everywhere but above which you can obviously fix by just doing this. Now you've got a box of safety, you're gonna be okay. You can eat your pork chops in safety, and we can move on to the warp forest, which is my next goal. 
<laughs> that ghast just took out the other ghast, which conveniently has led us to a warped forest, actually. So warped forests are the second best way to get ender pearls in Minecraft, and probably the most reliable way if you don't mind dealing with a tiny bit of fear, as opposed to a lot of piglins and craziness. And uh, given what happened to us last time, I think it's important we do this, because the only mob that will spawn in the warp forest, besides, you know, normal never mobs, is the enderman, which means you can use this as a great source of ender pearls. Also, if you don't have a hay bale and you're in the nether, you can use this as another wonderful thing because these twisting roots will spawn all over the place. And although this is a lot dicier, you can use these twisting roots to avoid full damage. As you can see right there, I just saved my own life. Although I've lost my twisting roots now. So yeah, endermen are another terrifying mob. They have a huge amount of health, as you can see. Uh, however, the big uh, downside to them is they are three blocks tall, which means all you have to do to be safe from endermen is make a two wide hole. Then you can look at them to your heart's content and they can come after you, but they can't do anything about it. And so you just hit them nice and slowly, nice and simply. I'm going to use up my entire sword here, so probably should get another one ready. But uh, as simply as this, we can look at Enderman until inevitably we kill them. I do recommend doing this in a more open place where there aren't a lot of spots around you for Enderman to teleport away. Over a lava pit is maybe going a little bit excessive, but I just recommend doing this so that Enderman won't vanish just after you find them, because that can be very frustrating when it happens. So yeah, we just... Want to prevent any Enderman from getting anywhere too far away from me. And there you can see my first of 12 Ender Pearls of the day. And now that we're in here, instead of Enderman teleporting away like they did before, we just stand here and watch as the Ender Pearls roll in. You only need 12 Ender Pearls, maybe 13 or 14, to be extra sure to beat the Ender Dragon uh, or to get to the Ender Dragon. And so it's a simple enough plan for us to take out. What we can also do, as long as we have a block up here to prevent them walking there, we can make these little viewing platforms so we can look Enderman in the eyes, and that way, okay, we'll remove that block too. This way we can actually just have them teleport over without us even ever leaving our safety. See, there's an Enderman there. We look at him, and he knows to teleport right over to where he can kill me. Or he's gonna walk, I guess. Um, and so yeah, this is probably the second fastest way of getting Ender Pearls. It can be the safest if you know what you're doing though, uh, in regards to like, only look at Enderman when you are safe, or about to be safe, quicker than they can teleport to you. If you ever find that there are no more of the mobs that you're looking for, this can be Enderman or anything else, uh, my pro tip is to move around a little bit in the biome. Because of the way that simulation distance works in Minecraft, both Java and Bedrock, um, the further you move, or the more all of these mobs that are spawning caves and stuff, will disappear, leaving space for more of the mob that you're actually looking for to spawn visibly. This can be witches, this can be Enderman, it can be literally anything, but even just running away and coming back will mean that even after a biome being desolate, and having none of the mobs, as soon as you get back, maybe now there's some space for some mobs to spawn. But we're going back to the overworld now. Remember where your portal is. Hopefully you wrote down the coordinates or have a vague sense of direction back there. If not, then it might be a long journey. If you run out of blocks and you need to get a lot very quickly, my pro tip is come to either of the forest biomes because obviously every single one of these stem blocks will translate into four wooden planks, or four crimson planks in this case. Then by just using a single crafting table, you can take, let's say, 12 planks and turn them into 24 or 15 planks and turn them into 30 of these slabs, making it very easy for you to bridge places. It's very dangerous to do. The only reason it's worthwhile is because we have an ender pearl to save our life if it comes to it, as well as this. And uh, yeah, we still should go back that way around. But I wanted to show you that you can go, you can literally mine four blocks of a tree and you can get enough slabs to get you halfway across a giant gap. Because did you know, wood is the best resource for time to mine versus blocks gotten from it, just because it subdivides into so many more blocks. I think I got lost because I found a bastion instead of my portal. This is actually another great source of loot if you know what you're doing. I recommend literally peek in the chest, grab what you want, then get out of here because it is a very dangerous thing filled with dangerous stuff. Um, maybe the golden apple, maybe the arrows we want there too. Um, and then also in this chest we get, oh heck yeah, I would love another sword. I, I kind of used mine up. Get some more arrows, get some more nuggets. I think that's all we're going to want. Maybe also turn the block of iron into iron or is it later? But yeah, I'm still very much lost. This is probably the same Bastion from early, actually. Oh, it is, I think. It's, it's likely to be the same one, which means... Wow, by the way, this means that the Bastion loot is really just that good. But it also means I know where to find my portal now. Heck yes. 
We'll use that twisting vine tip from earlier to show you how you can take no full damage. Because once you've got these guys and a little bit of motor skill, you should be able to make full damage a thing of the past. Mostly. And just like that, we're back in the overworld where we're probably going to be staying for some time. So we're actually really fortunate because the thing I was going to do, which is get golden carrots, we already have. Because here's the deal. We're about to fight the Ender Dragon, the end boss of Minecraft. And if you're going to do something like that, you want to make sure you have the best food available to you. I would say cooked pork chops or cooked beef is good enough. But if you want to go for the very top tier of the best, then find a village and take some of those gold nuggets from earlier, converting them into, of course, golden carrots. I didn't realize there's no carrots inside of this particular village. Oh wait, over there. Maybe there's some. Oh darn, there's potatoes, there's melons, there's wheat. There is every crop in this village that we need besides carrots. Damn it, there's just so many of them too. Do carrots not grow in warm climates? Is that is that what I've learned from the Minecraft villagers? I'm not sure what educational lesson I can take from this, but 12 will be just about fine. As long as before then, we stick to our lower quality food, and as long as we have something like a golden apple to guide us along. I feel as though, uh, for the end, a lot of people go way overkill uh, about this, but all you really need to have is probably a decent set of armor. Every armor slot should be filled, unlike right now, so go find yourself a crafting table, and go take full advantage um, off any iron you've got grabbed. A lot of people go overkill on this and they say they need neverite to beat the ender dragon. But here's the scoop. Uh, iron armor is about double as good as leather or anything before it. However, di diamond armor is only about 20% better than iron armor. And neverite armor is about 5% better uh, than diamond. And even then, only really in weird niche situations of super large damage amounts. And so in general, I would say make iron armor, maybe enchant it if you want to go next level, but you don't need to go never eat armor or you can't beat the dragon. Uh, it's not going to be the thing that determines your fate. Also, we're going to craft ourselves some eye offenders. I think we'll just be honest with ourselves and craft 10. We're probably going to need more than that later. And uh, the other thing we need to be uh, mindful of is the fact that something that could really help us with the dragon is probably potion brewing. So what you do is if you are lucky enough to find a brewing stand in a village, you take one. If you have to make one yourself, it's only four cobble, three cobblestone and a, a blaze rod. It's an easy enough recipe. And uh, yeah, also if you want to get some extra ender pearls. But for now, let's go. Let's fire an eye fender off and let's see where about our stronghold is. We've traveled so far from spawn that I genuinely don't know. Oh, it's going to go that way. Huh. <clears throat> so we know it's not below this village, which means that I guess it just happens to coincide with its coordinates. Again, we dug down earlier. We know that's not what it is. So what I recommend always doing is throw two eye offenders from kind of, not like, you know, like different d directions. That way you can kind of triangulate how far you've got to go. If this one goes directly forwards, we know we're going thousands of blocks. If this one goes really diagonally that way, we'll know that it's not that far away. And if it goes somewhere in between, we know roughly how far we've got to go. So we fire upwards and... Huh, it goes... Okay, wait, wait. The eye offenders are pointing towards this village, which we don't think has a stronghold but maybe we're just wrong about. We dug down from the very center of the village, but maybe I was just stupid and I should have dug down from somewhere else, just tried it again. Okay, yep, yeah, you know, what? let's try it, let's try. The easiest way to dig down so that we can guarantee we can dig up is of course to dig in a little, little bit of a, you know, like a staircase going down formula. I recommend this because that way we're not like changing our coordinates drastically. We're still digging down the right place and we'll hopefully find some stronghold bricks on the side. I don't really know if that's going to happen, but it'd be nice, right? Before we can solve the mystery of what's happening in the stronghold, it is nighttime, and I'm hoping it's been more than three days since I last slept. In fact, I think it has been, because there is one annoying mob that will spawn after this time, which has no use for anyone ever, except honestly, this one specific thing is amazing. If you're going to fight the Ender Dragon, having phantoms, or rather, having potions that come from killing phantoms, is what you want in life. So yeah, we kill these guys till we get uh, one of their lovely drops, and then we take full advantage of it. By the way, they're one of the most annoying mobs to kill, but they will get trapped <laughs> under all sorts of things. And you can use this to your advantage, should you really want to. Uh, like we're going to do right now, in fact. Oh no, he got out. Okay, so just, there we go. No phantom membranes yet? Okay. 
It's a 50-50 drop chance. We'll, we'll get one eventually. If phantoms are taking too long for you to take down, consider firing arrows up at them. You won't come to me? Fine. I'll come to you with my instrument of death. And there we go. Please tell me that'll drop a membrane. No, we're having such bad luck. I never thought I would say this unironically, but I really hope a phantom spawns and one has. Thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. No, okay. We have to kill them. One of them needs to give us a phantom membrane. Oh, please. I've never seen a mob with buggier AI. Like, what is, what is your flying pattern there, friend? Like, <laughs> unless they're specifically dodging arrows, I don't see why they are doing this. Not a single phantom. I killed so many phantoms tonight. Okay, we got another one here. So I'd say the alternative best potion that you can make if you can't get phantom membranes for some reason um, is throw a ghast tier in there, obviously after never warts, and you can make regeneration potions. Regeneration potions are great, an alternative to them if you don't have never warts, or if you just don't want to go get some ghast tiers. It's just honestly, use golden apples. Golden apples... Uh, in plural, not just a single one of them, will really help you out because when a bad thing happens, use the golden apple to survive. Also make sure you have a hay bale of some form, or you have twisting vines. Hay bales are easier to get of course, but if you have twisting vines, they're great too. Have something to negate full damage, because most of your deaths are going to come from that. And then the other thing is before you go anywhere near your stronghold, make sure you bring a bed with you. If you find your stronghold, you're gonna wanna sleep in that thing, because if it's your first time feeding the Ender Dragon, you might die. If it's your 50th time, you, s you still might die, honestly. <laughs> Embarrassingly. How long have I not been recording for? No, 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 no. Please tell me I just F9'd at some point without realizing. Oh, gosh. I think uh, that resets my insomnia. And so I can't get a phantom. No. How do I just not record? How stupid am I? What's wrong with me? Oh. Uh, I spent out. I gave so many pro tips. I went to the stronghold, I found the end portal, and it's all off camera because of the, like, I don't, how do I, how do I not turn on a recording? I don't understand. I, this is my job. I turn on recordings for a living. I, how, why, I've been playing Minecraft for 90 minutes talking to myself and it's not been on camera. Do you know how crazy that makes me? Do you know how insane it is to talk to yourself while you play video games? You you are the one redeeming factor here, camera. Ah, uh, so just imagine there's like 10 pro tips in there. Look at this, I placed grass in the nether and I, I gave you the pro tip that it won't spread unless there's a light level nearby. So make sure you light lots of fires near your, <laughs> near your grass. I, you know, it's all, it's all gone, all gone terribly. You know, you're just gonna have to believe there's 30 pro tips here. Uh, and if you want, if that's not good enough for you, did you know bees are yellow? Did you know that, um, I don't know, that in Minecraft, the days are like 20 minutes long, and so if you want nighttime to come, or you want daytime to end, or whatever else it is, then you can just do things. Maybe you didn't know that, huh? Maybe, maybe you should have known it. I'm just desperately trading every piece of gold I get. I just need one trade. One, one super unlucky rare trade. It's okay, guys. Okay, no, it's not okay. And we're probably gonna die if I if I can't get out of whatever this is. Oh my gosh. Minecraft. Please, please learn to turn it down a spare bit. Oh, Christ. I really can't use words to express how badly things are going for me right now. I, uh, I just... No! Okay, I should be dead right now. Thank God that I'm not. 
<sighs> Genuinely, I think the worst feeling you can feel as a YouTuber is that feeling of your recording failed or it didn't work or just for some reason you're not been recording. Who doesn't record? How do you not do that? That's like, that's your one job. You hit the record button and you, and you say words to the camera like you're a crazy person, but it's okay because you're actually just talking to... <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break. I'm just gonna, we'll just be right back for a bit. Pro tip, you don't need to manage your inventory anyway. If it's not filled, you're not making maximum space of it. You know how people say you only use 10% of your brain at any point in time? Use 100% of your brain, and the easiest way to do that is using 100% of your inventory, which we're doing right now because we have such a big brain all of the time. I, I totally swear I do. A myth people will often repeat is that you need to go to a desert to find Enderman. Uh, it's, it's less repeated nowadays because you just go to the Never if you want Ender Pearls. But if you do want to find any mob, be that a witch, spider jockey, whatever weird thing you're looking for, I recommend finding a nice open surface. That can be a plains, that can be a desert, it can be a savannah. But the reason why you're going to find Enderman or witches or spider jockeys here is just because it is so flat. Wow, first time, that is amazing. And see? Still using 100% of my inventory because I've got such a big brain. We're going to go down now uh, into our end portal because, um, yeah, one of the many tips uh, in there. You know what? Should we go through them now as we go down this staircase? Um, rapid fire. Did you know the end portal room is always five blocks away from the starting staircase? If you have a staircase that goes up towards nowhere, uh, it's five rooms away from the end portal. Handsy, but not enough to help you find the end portal by itself. So the second tip is that the higher up you go, the more likely you are to find that starting point and therefore the end portal. You, it might seem like going down staircases is a smart thing to find the end portal, and sometimes you're going to need to. Um, however, it's smarter not to. Next pro tip is that having a respawn point right before the uh, the end is really 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 smart because you never know how and when you're gonna die next pro tip here um, We're gonna race through all of these um, Oh, we totally could have made a uh, potion. I, I thought we didn't have the right stuff for it, but we totally could have. Uh, next pro tip right here. Uh, always place your eye offenders in the portal rather than leaving them on you. If you know there's a chance you might die and fall into something fiery. Next pro tip. You know what? Leaving lava underneath there when you have silverfish, not very smart. Cover this up. Just, you know, do you need the lava? Most of it, no. Leave one piece for the for the sake of having lighting, but otherwise you're fine. Next pro tip. Did you know the stronghold has all sorts of loot? I didn't find any ender pearls, which is what I really would have craved, uh, but there is all sorts of good loot in here. Like if I have anything that you, you didn't notice last time, I probably found it in one of these stronghold chests, which by the way, can include things like amazing enchantments. I just don't have the iron to take advantage of that. Next pro tip. Okay, we're gonna sleep one more time. Next pro tip is did you know the end is a scary place? Filled of scary monsters. Actually, it's only the one really very scary monster. Um, but yeah, one of the things you're going to want to do, besides leave stuff for future you, which I've already done. So next pro tip, leave stuff. Yeah, even if you want to do right here, craft yourself a little chest. And now, next time you come back to the end, because let's be honest, if it's your first time, odds are there'll be a next time. So, you know, put something handy in there. Just, you know, future you will appreciate this stuff and uh, can use that maybe to help out current you. We'll put... Our andesite in there too. Again, right now me hates the andesite and the gold nuggets, but future me is really going to appreciate that. So now what you do is you go in there and you, you slay the dragon, do your thing, yas queen, etc, etc. However, um, I think that instead of doing that, a much more fun way to tackle this for your first time is to go and enjoy the end islands, especially if you're playing bedrock and this whole guide is geared towards bedrock. Um, what you can just do instead quite easily because of the bridging in front of you technique is you can just walk out into the void. It's very scary to do because there is like everything you, everything you have will just be lost in the void forever. Do you want me to show you? I throw the nevrak. It's it's just gone for, forever wise. And uh, so yeah, you can bridge out towards the end islands, which is a really cool thing to do. However, I recommend if you're gonna do this, bring some blocks with you. So what I like to do is I bring some cobblestone or some wood, something like that with me, because all what I can do is I can immediately take that cobblestone and turn it into a near infinite number of slabs. Look how many slabs of cobblestone I have. It's enough to fill up my whole inventory, which is dangerous using slabs and bridging forwards, but we're gonna do it today anyway. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I shouldn't say that in a playthrough where the worst has happened so many times, should I? But yeah, as you can see from back here, not only are you now closer to the islands at the edge, in fact, if you turn up your end distance all the way, you can see the islands at the end. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. 
Isn't this one of the craziest views in Minecraft? And uh, yeah, this is one of the real beauties of Bedrock. And now we can see where our end city is. Oh, and it has an end ship. The fact that we can see that when we're this close to the end island is amazing in my opinion. Um, and yeah, for the end, especially where there's basically nothing out here, turn up your render distance. It'll help you out, probably. At the very least, it's a pretty view, right? Okay, now we're a little bit further out. You can literally see in multiple directions end cities and stuff. Honestly, it's just... This is, this is the way to experience this dimension. It's just, it's, it's very fun in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, high render distance, really cool in the end, uh, especially valuable here. Your render distance by default turns down in the never, a fact you might not know. Um, and in the overworld, it's necessary only sometimes, but like can cause frame rate issues. In the end, oh, do you see that actually? Never mind, we should turn it down a little bit. My next pro tip here isn't just for the end, but it is going to help us. Let's say you want to go up a few blocks, because right now we're at Y level 50. We want to be at like, you know, let's say 70, maybe one below 70. An easy way that to stack yourself up is to place a slab, and then a full block, and then a slab, and then a full block. If you use full blocks, you're wasting full block here, full block here, full block here, full block here, etc. Not very efficient. Whereas if you use slabs, now you're using only one and a half blocks to go each way. You could always get those blocks back later, but if you're in somewhere where it's very dangerous to do so, this is a, a good alternative. Again, a, a, another fun way is if you have, let's say, torches, you could place a torch on the side of this block, then place a full block on top of that, and then, you know, like, do your thing that way. Again, there are, there are lots of uh, ways you can choose to do this. But the most effective, if you want to quickly bridge, is to use full block, slab, full block, slab, but probably have them next to each other rather than whatever I'm doing right here. So a dangerous pro tip for this situation, but a good one in general, let's say you're doing a super flat world or something. By the way, I have no, I have no idea how many tips we're at right now because of <laughs> how many we lost. But um, so wait, I'm just gonna give you tips because I, I want, you know, I think you deserve tips. That's, that's my official stance. Um, I feel as though placing on the bottom half of a slab rather than the top half, so this is a full block. Top half just is treated as a solid block. Bottom half, like we're on right now, is not. And so no mobs can spawn here, which is really handy for all sorts of situations. Uh, but it mostly means we don't need to light this up to stop, uh, you know, Enderman being able to teleport here and ruining our life. Okay, this is actually going to run really close as to whether I'm going to make it there or not. Because I have 60 of these. I have 78 diorite slabs. And then I can maybe make myself a ton of crimson slabs. But after just 200 blocks, I have to cover 250 to get to that end city. Uh, not not counting any of the blocks when we get there. Which means this is going to be a real close fight. But we'll see how it goes, you know? Just like with everything in life, you can wing it and you'll probably do surprisingly well. Okay, this is coming right down to the wire, but I do have 46 dirt blocks. Which should take me just over the edge. Also, I way overestimated how tall I'd have to be. So I'm actually going to have to fall down onto one of my twisting vines, which I'm gonna perfectly manage right now, just to show you another pro tip. These things are useful everywhere. So usually this is also where you can get your hands on some shulker shells, which is a really wonderful resource. Um, or you can get them to shoot each other and reproduce infinitely, as you're gonna see is gonna happen about now. Uh, wow, do we have two shulkers? Or do we have more than two shulkers? Anyway, so I recommend staying out of their end distance and instead finding where your end ship is. You should be able to work out where is directly below it because if you look directly up, it'll be above you. You know, this is this is why you come to this channel, for pro tips like that. But yeah, you can use this to your advantage uh, to work out where is just to the side of it, which is a much uh, better place. And now you can bow mill your twisting vine like crazy as you go up it. You might get hit by something, but again, you don't have to worry about full damage when you're on this thing. Uh, because you can climb it all the way to the top. Oh, okay. See? They're just helping me climb the vine. <laughs> it's really nice of the shulkers to care so much about it. But yeah, now you should be pretty much immune from full damage as well. Um, and all you gotta do is get over there. Actually, I think I need to fly over, so it'd be handy if they could give me a little bit of a, a nudge, maybe? A little bit of a fly, perhaps we could say. There we go. And now you can utilize this to get to the very top of the tower. Probably still gonna have to place one of these on the way down to avoid taking massive full damage. Oh yeah, I'm scared, I'm scared. I'm, s no, okay, okay. Now I'm really scared. Now I'm like actually fearful for my life and I'm being repeatedly hit. Oh Christ, okay. I have to make this or my stuff will falls out in the end over nothing. Oh, I've never been so terrified. Let's grab the hay belt and let's use that instead. No! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
And now you can see why you should place your bed in next to your portal. Actually, let me show you something even better. Right now, we only have a bow with unbreaking and power and 10 arrows. And I'm going to show you how we can defeat the Ender Dragon. We just have to get up to the platform. So let's just drop off the edge. These gold nuggets are dying with me. Uh, we have, we're going to have access to no food. We're going to have access to literally nothing besides three twisting vines, five raw beef, and some blocks. And let me show you how that is genuinely enough to beat the dragon with, uh, because you don't need anything to beat the dragon. All you need is knowing where her attacks are so that you can avoid them, which admittedly that is something, but you know, let's not be pedantic here, shall we? Um, yeah, even these arrows are entirely excess. Like they're gonna help us out and you know, slow, speed things up. But right now, let's show you how you can defeat the dragon, even if you've got 10 arrows <laughs> and a not very good bow. Because let's be honest, each of these low down towers Easy to hit. You're not gonna really struggle that much with them. And also, let's be honest, uh, the dragon is scary. Um, but realistically, she has two attacks that can get you. One is this physical attack where she flies in. Um, which she'll also do to come to the center. And the other of which uh, is this acid attack. Stay away from the acid at all costs. Stay away from the flies at all costs. And the way you do that is by looking up at her. The reason you want to do this, by the way, look at this. I'm literally gonna, gonna punch the dragon to death. I was gonna say... Fist, but maybe we should not say that. Um, and yeah, another thing you'll notice is how loud the dragon is. This is a good time for me to introduce you. See, this is how safe it is. I can show you in the audio settings that there is a hostile creatures setting. You want to turn that way down. And now, now everything's nice, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, hostile creatures. Uh, you're going to want to turn them down with the Ender Dragon. She is mixed way too loud in with the audio, and you're going to notice uh, very quickly. So yeah, um, I recommend looking up the whole time so you don't meet your glaze of any Enderman. It's the Enderman that often kill you way faster than the dragon does. Um, also, she's flung down again. And do you see what I mean here? Killing, the, Taking down the towers will help slow down the rate at which she heals. But at least uh, in current Minecraft Bedrock days, at time of recording this video, it's relatively easy not to. Even when you do have to do so. Also, by the way, another pro thing that's been around Bedrock forever. Uh, if you hit the dragon in her head with a arrow, you'll now be able to deal double damage. I actually don't know if that works. Let me try that again. But yeah, you want to look up to the sky, not only because this is how you can avoid her attacks, this is how you avoid the Enderman's gaze, but it's also where you need to look anyway to take down these towers. So right there, that tower, it's gone. I got the, I got a lovely explosion in just as she's flying down, meaning it's really easy for me to take down the dragon. If we're being honest, right now especially, um, whether this is intentional behavior or not, um, it's been in the game for so long, both the double damage headshot thing and also this, that it's hard to even say for sure. But um, yeah, take down the dragon. It seems like this daunting task, but if I can do it with 14 Neverack, six out, oh wait, it's not done yet. Let me, I'm not gonna count those chickens before they've hatched. Um, yeah, we got five arrows. I'm gonna try and always take down the lowest towers first. They're the easiest targets. But as you can see, she's flying back in now. A couple more uh, you know, fists of death and boom, the ender dragon is dead. I. I genuinely just did that with this inventory, so you can probably do it if you've got your iron on. You can probably do it if you've only got, uh, you know, like a crossbow instead of a regular bow, or whatever else the situation may be. It's quite easy to take down the dragon should you want to. Wow, that really was perfectly placed for me to use, and I, I still didn't. I still went the very long way around. But that could have saved me a lot of time, huh? It also would have probably led to my death because it's right over nothing. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't be so happy about that. Anyway, um, yeah, let's now jump right back onto our same vine. And uh, I don't know how many tips we're at right now, but because of the lost footage, you know, of doing, there's, there's so much. This video has been a wild ride, but just to make up for that wild ride, I'm now gonna give you some, uh, some, some random Minecraft tips to kind of balance us out and get us back up to 101. So did you know bees if you uh, feed them and they pollinate, they will make your crops go faster. So if you want your crops to go fast, don't just put water on them. Don't just give them light. Make sure they have bees nearby because bees pollinate things. I bet you didn't know that. A piston can only push 12 blocks. So if you want to stop a piston from working, put 13 blocks in front of it. And then you can actually use a piston to push that 13 block. Whatever, pistons pushing 12 blocks is a useful thing that not everyone knows about. Another useful thing is, did you know, in, you go to the end, there's only one food source and it magically makes you teleport, which you can use to your advantage. Let, let's say you're on top of something quite high and you want to get down without taking full damage. If you chorus fruit away, you'll almost certainly get off the object. Uh, however, it'll never chorus fruit you up somewhere. So I'll never chorus fruit on top of one of these uh, powers. You can only chorus fruit down or horizontally 
you never generally uh, pull screw up, which you can use to kind of steer people in a direction. Because uh, as you can see right here, I'm just going horizontal. It's it's wonderful. Also, chorus fruit is a food that has a limit to how often you can try to eat it. So if you try to eat one, you can't, look at that cool down, you can't try to eat one too soon afterwards, which is weird. But yeah, we can also use this for our advantage right here. Let's eat a chorus fruit right now. It's gonna teleport me right down there. Do you see that? Chorus fruit, super handy. Bet you didn't know that. It's not really worth doing most of the time, but it's fun. <laughs> Does, you know, do things need to be worth doing or can they just be fun? Uh, just like subscribing to this video, which I hope you do. But for now, thank you for watching. Good, could you please go away? Um, I, I would like to go away. Bye.